over the last two weeks, I've been doing some combat sports photography, so a little bit of Muay Thai, some kickboxing. And doing those jobs and looking at the pictures afterwards really made me realize like how far it actually come in photography, like how much I've learned with my camera and stuff. Because I was thinking if 18 year old me was to do that job, he would have to get like facial reconstruction surgery and live piss and shit in a cave out of sheer fucking embarrassment. So in this video, I'm gonna share seven crucial tips that will improve your fight photography. So tip number one, and arguably the most important tip, is lighting. Now I know what you're thinking, oh, I don't have control of the lighting, I'm just there with my camera and that, and I'm just... I hear you, right? Don't worry, I got you. There is a lighting guy whose job it is to control the lighting. Just introduce yourself, say, you know, I'm the cameraman doing the photography for tonight. Is it okay if you can just give me a rundown of what the lighting's gonna look like in the ring while the fighters are fighting? He's gonna be like, yeah, sure, no worries, mate. And this will allow you to play around with your camera settings, get your white balance sorted and all of that jazz before the fights even happen. And, quick tip for you, in my experience, sometimes lighting guys like to add, you know, some coloured lights into the ring and whatnot, like, all funky lights, disco. You don't want the fighters having, like, big purple faces. This happens to me in one of my shoots. This happens to me. Avoid the embarrassment. Don't let that happen to you. Just say to the lighting guy, sick. Is it okay if we just take the party lights off during the fight and then obviously when, when you're having breaks and whatnot, then by all means bang them on but just for the fights just for the fights maybe just get the four corners lit with the standard unless you want a bit of colors then by all means go for it but in my experience it looks fucking shit but having a good understanding of the lighting before any fights happen is going to set you up fucking nicely tip number two we're talking gear, we're talking lenses. What lens do I use? Am I going wide angle and getting in there in the action? Am I gonna stand way back for 70 to 200 zooming in on the action? To be honest, this is kind of subjective. It depends what look you kind of want. What I found worked for me, and fortunately enough, enough was the standard 28 to 70 kit lens. Fucking sweet, because everybody has a kit lens. As long as you have a kit lens, you can do this, I promise you. I found that it was the perfect focal length between 28 and 70. Like 28 was wide enough and 70 was close enough. Obviously, if you have a, a more upgraded version that goes to 2.8, then use that one. That wasn't a big issue for me because I'm shooting on the Sony a7 III. I can bump my ISO up to like 10,000 without there being any sort of significant noise. But my friend Arthur was also shooting there. He's using a Nikon D3500 and his pictures still look pretty clean. He's also using a kit lens. So honestly, you should be fine. Shutter speed. Shutter speed. What shutter speed should I use? Your shutter speed is crucial in fight photography. The actions are very, very quick. As a kind of rule that I follow is I never, ever, ever, never, ever go below one five hundredth of a second. But if I can, I like to shoot at one thousandth of a second. This is the point where you will stop your images dead. At one over five hundred, you will see a little bit of motion blur but this will mainly be at the end of limbs. So feet and hands, they tend to travel the quickest. Sometimes that looks quite good because it adds a little bit of storytelling to your picture. You know, you can see that fist traveling a little bit more. Me personally, I do like to stop the action dead. If someone's getting punched in the face, I want everything to be still. And especially if there's like spit or sweat or anything like that, you can actually freeze all of that in the air. But if you want to add more motion blur, that decision is totally up to you. This next tip seems a little bit obvious, right? But there are some absolute biscuit heads out in the world. So if you're a biscuit head and you haven't thought about this, bursts, consider bursts. Burst pictures, you wanna take bursts. I repeat, take bursts. When people are swinging and kicking and punching, you really don't wanna miss any action. And when somebody throws a punch, it's gonna be super hard to time the punch right by just clicking the shutter once. You wanna take a burst of you know any sort of flurry of punches that happens so that you catch pretty much everything that happens in that little moment. If me and you are standing ringside and you take 15 pictures in a burst and I take one picture, 
you are 15 times more likely to have got a better shot than I have. And sometimes this can lead to you getting a really nice burst sequence. If someone's got punched in the face and then knocked down and you manage to get that whole thing as a burst, then it's gonna look proper sick. There's not really much else I can say about that. It's, it's pretty, just, just use burst. Stop being a fucking biscuit head and use bursts. But this does lead me onto my next tip, which is having a good SD card. I learned this in hard way. When I went to my first event, I was taking a shit ton of burst pictures. I was like, <laughs> my memory card got super full. Luckily, I had another SD card, you know? Man's a wizard. Pulled out another SD card, put it in my camera. I didn't realize that this was a slower SD card. I didn't know how much SD cards varied, but when I was taking bursts with this new SD card, it was taking so long to copy the pictures onto the SD card. So I had to sit and wait for those pictures to be copied before I can take more bursts. Meanwhile, action's happening in the ring and I'm missing it because I couldn't copy the fucking files onto the card quick enough. You're gonna be taking a lot of pictures and you have to have an SD card that's big enough and can copy the pictures fast enough. Otherwise, you're gonna miss so much. I cannot stress enough. Let me just throw some stress at you. Stress. Get a good SD card. Get a good SD card. Anyway, back to the photography side of things, like where are you gonna position yourself? Um, how are you gonna get like the best angles and whatnot? Have yourself a little circle of the ring and just look for a background that's really plain, doesn't have a lot going on. Because when you're taking pictures of the fighters, you don't want any sort of distractions in the background because that's just gonna take the attention away from the fighters. In the last event that I done, it was a kickboxing event, they had a smoke machine. So I was literally the other side of the ring to make sure that when I was shooting the fighters, the smoke was in the background. Definitely, 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 definitely find the most neutral plain background and shoot into that. If there's a smoke machine, use that to your advantage. Bosh, last point. My last tip is just to anticipate the action. When people are fighting, they normally have a sort of fighting style that they fall into. For example, in the last event that I done, there was a guy that after every kick, he threw a punch and I started to pick up on this. So I would purposefully wait for it. So while I'm taking my burst, I'd remember not to take my finger off of the, off of the shutter because I knew he was about to throw a punch. And that can really lead to you getting the shot or missing the shot. You can't do this for everybody because a good fighter is pretty unpredictable. However, in fighting, there's always rhythms and patterns and people tend to do what they're comfortable with doing. So you can kind of pick up on this and use that to your advantage. So I'd highly recommend doing that. If not, just keep your finger on the burst for as long as you can, given of course that you have an SD card that's good enough. But now you know this, you know? So these are my seven tips. And if 18 year old me knew that, that would have saved them getting plastic surgery and shit in a cave for years. You know what, actually, I might just give him a call and that will save a lot of fucking hassle. Dude, just hang up. I'm just gonna have to wait. Fuck this, man. Hello? Um... Anyway, that's all from me today, guys. I hope you found this informative. I hope you found it entertaining. I hope you learned something. If you did, kick that like button in the willy. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button twice. If you are interested in photography, filmmaking, and just my style of videos, then maybe consider subscribing. If not, it's cool. Thank you for watching anyway. Um, and yeah, okay, bye.